other coast, but the East Coast is a blessed coast for our messenger Messiah established those seeds and as a result we are here today and so Minister Farrakhan has a representative coming from New York City that is a brother and a friend to Baltimore as well because 6 and 7 is 13 which is the thunder but it's also the kingdom That's right. so my brother coming to bring the thunder of God that we may establish the kingdom of God in the hearts and minds and then in reality. So let us bring to the rostrum our brother, our friend from Muhammad Mosque, number seven, New York City, our East Coast regional minister and student of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, student minister Abdul Hafiz Muhammad. Let's bring him on with a round of applause. Thank you. So Thank you. Love you, sir. Love you more. May Allah bless you. Thank you, sir. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, all praise belongs to Allah, the Lord of the worlds. To Allah alone do I submit and seek refuge in. It is He who is the revealer of all truths, the send of all prophets, and the creator of all living things. We thank Allah surely for Moses and the Torah. We thank him for <clears throat> Jesus and the gospel. And we thank him for Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and the revelation of the Holy Quran. Peace be upon, peace be, peace be upon all of the worthy servants of Allah. Yes, I am a student, and we are students, of the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. Yes, he is the messenger, Messiah, the exalted servant of God. He is the eternal leader of the nation of Islam. We are thankful to Allah and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad for giving birth to their spiritual son. A man born from a woman physically, but a man born spiritually without the agency of a woman from two men who fell in love with each other. One whom is God in person and one who would be his messenger to receive his message. But from that message, he would get a helper. Did Moses have Aaron? Did Jesus have Peter and then Paul in the latter moment? Two men fulfilling one role? Did Prophet Muhammad have Umar, Ali, Abu Bakr, huh? Uthman? Yes, he had companions, is that right? Well, Elijah Muhammad has his chief helper, his national representative, the great preacher of freedom, justice, and equality. We speak of none other than the tried and tested servant of God, the man who is the personification of love, love, sabor, patience, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. I wish to greet you this morning here at Muhammad Mosque, number six in Baltimore, Maryland, with the greeting words of peace. We say it in the Arabic language, Assalamu Alaikum. To student minister Carlos Muhammad, our resident and senior minister here, our host, our national archive is of the nation of Islam and of the world. I mean, this man is doing a work and needs good helpers around him as he does that work by the grace of Allah for our nation. He has been able to find things that have been unfindable, unearth things that have not been earthed, preserve things that we generally might, you know, look at and say, okay, but now we say, wow. We thank Allah for such a brother that we have in our midst like that. And the young one should come up under him and learn what he does and how he does it, that we continue it into the future. One day, we must have not a museum, but a national archive facility. That not that we visit only during Savior's Day, but like we come here to Baltimore, Maryland, to the Blacks and Wax Museum, there needs to be a national archive facility of the nation of Islam. And what better place than the city where the brother put it to work at, right here in Baltimore, Maryland. We can go to work to try to make something like that happen. Yes, we can. 
You say, Brother Hafiz, we got enough to do already. Well, we got more to do. What else you got to do but love one another and build a nation? Let's get right to work. Thank you for your patience this morning. Brothers and sisters, yesterday, on last night, we had a second fundraiser for our Muhammad University of Islam. I'm thankful to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan for his patience, for his guidance, that we've reopened our Muhammad University of Islam in New York City, and we're going to not ever close it again by the grace of Almighty God, Allah, and his help. And when you are the shepherd of the house on behalf of Minister Farrakhan, you have a responsibility. We can easily say we're busy and we got to go and we could have gotten on the road yesterday early, but we said no. If we got a fundraiser for our children, and the children weren't there, this was an adult program, it was an all white program. Yeah, so we was all white up in there. No, not white man, dressed in white representing the purity that we want to get back that the devil has taken from us all praises due to Allah we had our own DJ I slam so we didn't have to worry about telling the DJ wrong song or have to deal with the DJ for the bad songs DJ I slam which is teaching today He's my assistant minister at Mosque number seven. Student minister Arthur Muhammad is delivering the word. Let's give him a hand in Mosque number seven, New York City. We can't do any of this work without good helpers. And the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has asked the Nation of Islam to be his helpers. Not only we who represent and deliver the word, but every believer, every person that I'm looking at, be his helpers in the cause of freedom, justice, and equality. So we stay for that program. So it caused us to leave a little bit later. And then something happened, Brother Carlos. The wrong information was put in the GPS. Oh, we got into Maryland, no problem. But when we opened up our eyes, we was at somebody's private house. And I said, I mean, I know they love me in Baltimore, but I know they didn't get me no private house. They, 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 they would have sent me an email or told me something that, uh, so we said, no, it's the wrong address. I said, brother, let's punch this in this way. And when we punched it in the right way, we realized we were 33 miles from where we needed to be, which is not bad. But it took us through, God, what's that town? Oh, man, brother. Huh? No, yeah, uppercut, no. It, it was the town of the hotel. No. Oh, boy, I'm sorry. No, where the hotel is, it's, called, it's with a C. Cock Cockiesville. Yeah, where the horses used to be and all of that. Yeah, I know what it is. Oh, I asked questions when I got here. Horse land. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We was at the top. We saw farm after farm after farm after farm after farm. We need one of them farms. I've never seen that part of Maryland. We weren't about mastering the concrete jungle. We need to master one of them farms. Get on one of them big tractors and make some of this food that we can call our own to be truly how to eat to live. So even though we went the wrong way, Allah brought us the right way to see more of his earth. I'm ready to get lost tonight just to ride back through there. Well, no, I don't want to ride back through that night. It's too thin of a road. One dude passed the driver by. I guess he was going too slow. I figured he was going too fast. But Allah is the best knower. I want to thank you for your welcome, for your reception. Let's get to work. Is that all right? The battle in the sky, the fight for the hearts and minds of the people. Brothers and sisters, I'm not going to shortchange you but I'm not going to keep you here all morning. But let's get to it. This is not about the mother plane. If you want to know that knowledge and information, go to the time and what must be done, parts 51 through 57, or the last one, 58, where the minister speaks on the new Jerusalem or the great wheel in the sky. That's not what Brother Hafiz came here to talk about today. The battle in the sky is mentioned by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad in his revelation put in book form, message to the black man. But the subtitle gives you an understanding of what we want to deal with. The fight for the hearts 
and minds of the people. That's the truest battle right now. The battle that is being waged for our thinking. That's why social media is there. It's a place that wages battle for the minds and the thinking of the people when you strolling. Hitting on the wrong page. Stuck on the page. Trying to expand and you only can go but so far. Huh? Then you try to put it up on a bigger screen. You can't get in the screen. So it's fighting for your minds. So some of us, we got crook neck. Because all we know how to do is. But we're not Ikra reading. Huh? You got your latest Final Call newspaper? Are you reading it? Hurricane brings hell and high water. And the minister's message, the fall of America. The storms that are here. The storms that were just in North Carolina. Unusual rain, as Minister Farrakhan teaches us. This is coming from God himself. He wants our attention. And he's going to continue to pour it down on this country. Because as he said, the gingerbread man is in the White House. That's what he said down the road in D.C. last Sunday. And he's here because America must pay for her past evils and the one she's piling up right now. We get killed black while standing, black while sitting, black while riding, black while being in our apartment. We get gunned down. But guess what? Some of us now, we've, we like this stuff because it's good media. We like posting our tragedies. And there's others of us, we like protesting our tragedies. We make a business out of it. You hear what I'm saying? That's not good. Our young people, uh, we as black men and black women, are not a business that we want to be in the business of for the rest of our lives. I hear some leaders of organizations say we celebrated 25 years of our civil rights work and this kind of work and activism and we can't wait for another 25 years. I say you are Mr. Fool. That's right. You think we want another 25 years of this hell and damnation that we've been getting here in America? They promise us that they love us and all they do is kill us. We're not tired. We're not Fannie Lou Hamer yet, male and female. Sick and tired of being sick and tired. It's a double negative, but you take a negative times a negative and it becomes a positive. What is the positive that we're going to bring from the negatives that we're getting in our life and the negatives we get from the devil's civilization? The positive is that we must build a nation of our own. Allah is going to have his will, even if he has to remove you and me out of the way. I want to submit to his will. Because that's part of the Muslim program. You say it ain't all Muslims, but it's the Muslims that are on the point. Nation of Islam is on the point. Nation of Islam is the vanguard. Ooh, when you had Freddie Gray, I didn't see all Muslims out there. And other Muslims got chained because they weren't out there. But I saw these Muslims out here. I saw the Muslims that wear the FOI uniform, the men who are part of the spiritual military of the fruit of Islam. I saw the men that wear the bow tie or the straight tie, but the men who were willing to stand up and protect their women and their children. I saw your student minister get to your feet out there with the brothers and the soldiers. Show your love to Brother Carlos and the FOI for what they did in this city, putting their lives on the line, and then... Pastor Jamal Bryan linking Muslim and Christian and Christian and Muslim together. But the fruit stood and protected stores and property and lives. We're battling for the hearts and minds of our people. He who prescribes the diameter of your thinking determines the circumference of your activity. That's a quote from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Never rob God. Huh? Never rob him. Yes. All right. Praise be to Allah. There it is. You can see it, right? Yes, sir. So when we quote this statement, and many of us know it now by heart, 
Say who we got it from. Because I didn't make it up myself. I didn't know it before he said it. When he first said it, I said, wow. No, seriously. I said, that's deep. He who prescribes the diameter of your thinking determines the circumference of your activity. What is the diameter of our thinking? How far does it go? And if that's weak, then circumference will be weak. If diameter is strong, circumference will be even stronger. You can think your way out of your condition in Baltimore like we can think our way out of New York. We sitting around here acting like, oh, sorrow for me. Oh, Allah, oh, God, why me? Why not you or me? But now that you're in a condition that only I can get you out of, you can't get out of it if you don't expand your mind. And you can't expand your mind unless you expand your brain. We're going to talk more about that. He who prescribes the diameter of your thinking determines the circumference of your activity. Battle. What is the meaning of the word battle? It is a sustained fight between large organized armed forces. A noun. It also means as a verb, fight or struggle tenaciously to achieve or resist something. Hmm? Fighting with spirit, with fervor. A lengthy and difficult conflict or struggle. Battle. Remember, we're fighting for the hearts and minds of our people. This is a protractile struggle. It's not one that just went overnight. It also means engage in a fight to struggle against. And it comes the origin from the Latin word uh, battore, which means to beat or defeat. A battle. So that means we're in a fight, brothers and sisters, that we can win. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad didn't teach us about the battle in the sky dealing with our minds if we knew we couldn't win the battle. No warrior gets in a fight that he can't see himself winning. And even though the other warrior think that he's going to be the victor, if right is not on his side, he can never win. See, a lot of people who are warriors war because they have might and power. But what does the scripture say? Not by might, nor by power. But what? By my spirit, thus saith the Lord. This is why you can never defeat Elijah and Farrakhan. Because they're not fighting against the forces of Shaitan, the enemies of his devils, with might and power. They're fighting with spirit. And while blood is thicker than water, remember this, brothers and sisters, spirit is thicker than blood. So when you can have a blood relationship with your family and have a spiritual one at the same time, that's deep. But when it's blood only, blood will let you down. Blood will hurt you. Blood will put you out in the middle of the night. Blood will rob you when you're sleeping. Blood will take your own clothes and put it on and act like they bought it themselves. When they know you just had it on last week. You understand? Blood won't let you, let you back in the house. it would be like the old story. Open the door, Richard. And everybody wondered why he's out there saying, open the door, Richard. He said, I know Richard's home because I'm the one that got the pants on. And there's only one pair of pants between the two, but he won't let me back up inside. That's how blood will do you. But spirit, spirit is one that you can talk to. Spirit is one you can befriend. That's why Allah says in the Holy Quran, the only true friend you have is Allah, the messenger, and the true believers. Now that it doesn't mean we don't love our blood family. Yes, we love our blood family, but we want our blood family to love the spirit that God has given us. The spirit of faith that God has put on us. The spirit of belief that God has put on us. The spirit to improve our lives that God has put on us. We want you to love that as well and embrace that. So when you go to the family picnic, you know, huh, swine is not divine. No pork on my fork. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, I can't do that anymore. But you don't love us? Yeah, I love you, but I love myself even more. And you're going to love yourself even more when you see improvement in me. Now come on down here, let's play this little bit where's over here and play these spades, but I'm not eating no more swine. That's out of my life here today. You understand? But what else is it you don't do, cuz? What else you don't do? I don't celebrate Valentine's Day. What? I don't celebrate Halloween. What? 
Come on now. I'm not into Christmas like that. What? You mean you don't want that gift I got for you? I got you a roly. I hear you. Well, you better find some time other than Christmas because I'm not coming by to get it. Neither did I ask for it. So you might as well spring it on me at another time because Christmas ain't the time I'm coming to get it. You understand? See, family will love if we take a stand on what we believe. But if they see us compromising, happy Valentine's Day. Really? Do you know the history of that? Look it up. Look up the history of Christmas, the true history that Donald Elijah Muhammad talks about and our Savior has arrived. Huh? Go get the book by um, uh, the, the True Paper Worship by, um, uh, uh, don't worry about it. You'll yeah, look it up, you'll find it. Aesop, I know that's one of the names to the dude, and great scholar. And Donald Elijah Muhammad read that book and it gives us great guidance on the Catholic Church and the machinations of Christmas. Yes, sir. Alexander Hislop. There you go, sir. See, I got one name right. I know I get the other one. See, that's why six and seven is together, because it produces the thunder and the kingdom, as our brother said earlier. Praise be to Allah. So, brothers and sisters, we are involved in a battle by which we're going to defeat the forces of evil. The book of James says this in the Bible, chapter 4, verse 7. I want you to understand it from different angles. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God, Resist the devil, and he will what? Flee from you. King James Version. What does the contemporary say? Surrender to God. Resist the devil, and he will what? Run from you. That's deep. It's good to have good transliterations to understand the fullness thereof. Resist means to remain strong against the force or effect of something. To not be affected or harmed by something. To exert oneself to prevent, withstand, and what? Defeat. So when we submit ourselves, therefore under God, that's the first part of our strategy against the battles of the force of evil and the forces that fight for our minds and our hearts and our spirit. Submit to God. That's our first problem. That's why we go through constant problems because we don't submit to God. Minister Farrakhan says not religiosity but spirituality. Then the second thing is, we must resist the devil. We can't submit to God, make prayer, submit to God, eat right, submit to God, treat the woman right, submit to God, treat the man right, submit to God, treat the children right, submit to God, make our community a decent and safe place to live, submit to God, but don't resist the devil. Letting him live in the living room of our mind and our thoughts and our thinking. So externally, we look good, but internally, our minds belong to something sinister, yes, lustful, yes, satanic. So Jesus says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. That's right. The heart of the human being yes, is not here. Right. Sisters, when you get that bad dude, or brothers, when you get that bad dude, do that, that sister. Hey, you talk about my heart says one thing, my brain says another. I think you need to listen to your brain. Because your heart been leading you in the wrong direction every time. So we must submit ourselves unto God. Then do what? Resist the devil. Fight with him. And when you get in that struggle, what is he going to do? Flee and run from us. That's the power we have. Is that right? Let's go on. Praise be to Allah. There's a battle taking place. The biggest battle is the one between Allah and Satan. That's the biggest battle. Allah, from the word il Allah, the oneness of God. Minister Farrakhan said many years ago in Muhammad Mosque, number 13 in Springfield, Massachusetts, Allah means all good deeds, all good thoughts come from the wise, all true and living God. I said, that's deep. Things that we've learned, Brother Carlos, we've never known until the man whom God raised up for the honor of Elijah Muhammad was given that kind of mentality to us that it excites our thinking. Allah! Allah! A-L-L-A-H Allah! Arm, leg, leg, arm, head. It just happens to work out that way. Allah! You the God you've been looking for. 
but we got to submit and surrender to the God. See, we may be gods in potential, but there's always one from among the gods who's the God. There's always one from among the beings who's the supreme being. Meaning if we make this room a library of Congress, I mean, our, I mean a library of our own Congress, and we each took a book, the God or the supreme being or the Mahdi or God in person walks in and he doesn't master one book, he masters every book that's in each of our hands of knowledge. The father of Master Fahd Muhammad took him back into the vaults of Mecca 150,000 years, so teaches the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Yes, and gave him the history of every second, every minute, every day, every month, every year for 150,000 years. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's proven just how the Honorable Elijah Muhammad guided the nation of Islam successfully. It's more proven how Minister Farrakhan guides us at 85 years young. Oh my God, he just, I mean his mind, and one day he told me in New York, he says, brother, when Elijah Muhammad was ill, or acting as though he was, to test me and others, to see, well mainly the minister rather, let's put it that way, but others might be general, but he tested him specifically. But when he was ill, he said that I and we who loved him didn't love him for his physical prowessness. We loved him for his mind. So Brother Carlos, even if he was in a diabetic coma, they loved Elijah Muhammad. As long as he was there, they loved the mind that he put in them. Are you listening? So when you saw the minister sit down, last Sunday. Ain't nothing wrong with that. He sat for nine hours. No leader has ever done that. Nine. Smiled. Loved. Appreciated. And said more without saying anything than those who spoke. Then he sat last week for three when it was just going to be an hour and 20 minutes, they wanted to bring him on. Three hours later, then he gets up for an hour and man just lays it down. But the church was very hot. It was hot for us who were sitting. So the minister just paused for a moment, then laid it out when he paused. Yeah. I think it was like that with the Honorable Elijah Muhammad in his time before his departure. It was like that with Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He would give cook bars sitting down. Yes, Alhamdulillah. It's all right. Yes, we love him for his mind. Right, right, right. But when we were blessed to have dinner with him, right. man, that man was sitting there as a beaming light. That's right. Wisdom fired up. Yes, he, just letting it just flow. Yes, That's what God has done. And the minister said to us, oh, would you look so good as I do at 85 years of age? And you know why he looks so good? And if any of us look good, and people tell us you're not the age when I was in prison the other day, well, I, wouldn't, I wasn't put in prison, I'm sorry. I, was, I go there to teach the brothers at Rikers Island. Let's clear that up, because you might have thought they just let me out on a furlough for the weekend or something. I mentor the young brothers in Rikers Island, 16 to 21, by the grace of Allah, with our teachings. And uh, when I went in this Thursday, one of the young brothers said, hey, we remember it's your birthday. It's your double nickel. I said, oh, okay, 55. He said, yeah. The guard said, you don't look 55? What? I said, yes, thank you, sir. I appreciate that. But why is it the minister looks so young? Why is it that some of us still look so young and, and, and can get even younger? It is not only because of how to eat to live. Minister Farrakhan says, if you only practice what to eat, and many of us eat well and put good in our body, but if you don't think right, then you will not have that beauty appearance. If we don't think right, we won't have that youthful appearance. Huh? I'm not going to go no more. There were many on that stage at Aretha Franklin funeral. I think they try to eat right. They didn't look better than the man that eats and thinks right. 
I'm sorry. It was no comparison at all. And it was all on social media, so you ain't got to be quiet. Yeah, you can give that a hand clap. You doggone right. It was all on Facebook, all on Instagram, all on Twitter. And it's the truth. We're telling you that there's something that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has given to us that you need to have in your life. And we want you to accept it today, not next week. So there's a battle going on between Allah and Satan, between God versus the devil. Because Allah makes gods and Satan makes devils. There's a battle between Jesus and Jews, members of the Jewish community. Not all Jews dislike Minister Farrakhan. There are many of them who appreciate his stance, his position, and the truth he stands on. But it is only those wicked, satanic Jews who are the ones that have been the land barons, who have controlled the talent of our people, that they don't want to let it go because they're used to nursing off the mammary gland of the black community. And our rise means their fall. Understood? Yes, Our rise. Therefore, yes, so they got to do all that they can to disrupt that, right. to keep the flow of that 1.2 or 1.3 trillion coming back to them and not staying with you and me. But black athletes are waking up today. Black entertainers are waking up today. Black activists are waking up today. Young people are waking up today, and they're going to come to the agonizing appraisal that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that this is a people disagreeable to live with in peace. There's a battle going on today between wise gods and dumb devils. There's a battle going on between believers versus hypocrites. If you're a believer, one could say you're a Muslim. But one can't say because you call yourself a Muslim, notice what I said, that you're necessarily a believer. There's people in prison and people in, in gangs and other associations say I'm a Muslim, but ain't doing Muslim deeds. Because when you're a believer, you do those things that surrender your will to the will of God. But when you claim you're surrendering to the will of God, but you don't have belief or you don't have faith, then those actions do not align with your title that we ascribe to. Would you agree? There's a fight, a battle going on between right versus wrong. When you're right in the nation, everyone is on your side. When you're wrong, you stand by yourself. Allah says it like this in the Holy Quran. Whatever good befalls you, know that it is from me, meaning Allah. Whatever evil befalls you, what does Allah say? Know that that is from yourself. Now come on now. That means you're standing by yourself. That means God ain't standing with us. It doesn't mean he doesn't love us, sisters. It don't mean he don't love us, brothers. No, don't set trip now. He still loves us. It doesn't mean he's not merciful to us. He is. It doesn't mean he's not beneficent. He is. It doesn't mean he's not compassionate. He is. But you're going to be by yourself. Until we come back to him, he'll be right there waiting for us. Islam is a handle, I heard Minister Farrakhan say from the Abu Elijah Muhammad. It will never let go of you unless you let go of it. Oh, we got to hold on to it and live by it. There's a battle going on between truth versus a liar. It's a terrible thing to be a liar. Because when you tell one lie, you got to tell another one to cover that one, and another one to cover that one, and another one to cover that one. And when you're finally, when we are finally uncovered, we feel so bad. So bad that we don't even want to be here. So bad sometimes we turn evil because we say there is no good in me. No, there's good in you. Greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. But if you don't and we don't submit to God, then greater will be the devil in you than he that should be in you. Right. See, that's the battle, fighting to reverse it. Yes, sir. So the big fight is Allah versus Satan. That's the fight that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad prepared and gently guided Minister Farrakhan to, the fight against Satan. And that Jesus figure would become an important figure in modern context against satanic Jews. Now remember, the synagogue of Satan is just not members of the Jewish community. Minister Farrakhan said the synagogue of Satan is made up of many members that are Jewish, that are black. 
huh? that are white, that are Asian, that don't even know that they're part of the synagogue of Satan. Do you understand? So don't make this only about Jews and we hate the Jews. No, but there are a group of them that's leading it up that they must be destroyed. Their civilization must be dismantled. That's why our unity is a weapon more powerful than nuclear weapon or bomb. That's why the young people that are sitting here today, pay attention, my brothers. Look, man, you ain't got no future, man, if your people ain't got no future. You ain't got no future in America. America don't love us. And we cannot make her better by protesting the gingerbread man. We're not going to make her better. No matter how many people you vote in the office, politics is a necessary tool of advancement, teaches the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Tool. You use it when you need it. But he said politics is not the panacea to any of our ills. Our root problem is a spiritual one that necessitates a spiritual solution. So the battle in the sky is a spiritual fight for the hearts and minds of the people yes, but a physical fight will come one day blood must be shed to have freedom and life the same way a woman must have blood and mucus for life to come in the world and that's why brother it is disrespectful that you're there to make a child on purpose or by accident or oops you didn't even know but you made one you know it's yours you know ain't nobody else been there but you because you know how you get if someone else was trying to get where you got, you know how you get. You crazy, deranged, so you don't go and tell the woman, is it mine? Fool, you need to hit him with that frying pan. Fool, you know it's yours. So we're there to make the child, but we're not there when birth comes? How many black men in this room who have children have seen birth take place? Raise your hands. I'm with you. I'm with you. See what I'm saying? That's good. That's beautiful. Praise be to Allah. And to my young brothers, that you're young and you're virile and you're spry and you're strong, but you've got to become emotionally balanced, spiritually, economically sound. A man having a strong body and a woman having a strong body, it can produce an effect, but it also can produce a negative effect. And if we're not there to secure that child, the woman dies for us and blood is shed. Well, one day, brothers, we might have to shed some blood. We might have to get our fight on for true liberation. And if we do, praise be to God, but it ain't going to be one with a gun. Those of you in law enforcement, you allowed to carry a gun, God bless you. Those of you, you got a gun, God bless you. Hafiz used to have guns, don't have them no more. I'm fighting a spiritual fight. No, that don't mean if you fight me and you got one and I overtake you, I won't use it on you. But I'm not coming to the fight carrying nothing, not even a pen knife. I'm coming with the spirit and the sword of God. That's what I'm coming with. And with that, we will always be victorious. I'm coming with an enlightened mind. I'm coming with wisdom that guides my actions. See, sisters, you need wisdom in your life to guide your actions. And your GPS will always be on point when you use the wisdom of Elijah and Farrakhan, which is the wisdom of God himself. So will ours, brother. We'll be guided out of situations on these streets getting involved in street organizations and involved in something that we need to get out that we should have never went into, but we did. We can get out. But you need wisdom, and wisdom, Minister Farrakhan teaches, is the skillful use of knowledge in an intelligent way. There's a battle going on. Is that understood? God versus Satan. I mean, Allah versus Satan. Allah makes God. Allah gave us Jesus. He makes wise gods. Believers come from Allah. The right or the Sarat al Mustaqim is from Allah. The truth is from Allah. Everything with Satan is devil, Jews, satanic Jews. Right. Huh? Because right. they're satanic Muslims too, you know. Oh, don't get quiet. I said they're satanic Muslims. 
Not all Muslims are good on the planet. Not all Muslims have treated women right. Not all Muslims have treated children right. Not all Muslims have treated their own population right in the East. There are a lot of Satanism everywhere, huh? But Satan is responsible for devils, satanic Jews, dumb devils, hypocrites, those who are wrong, and liars. So which side do you want to be on? Huh? You want to be on the truth, right? Even though I got a law on the left side. Huh? When you look at it, but that's the right side. Don't hit your left hand. Put it in check. Put your right over your left. Huh? And subdue it. Praise be to Allah. Let's go on. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said these words, quote, As long as I have the hearts and minds of my people, I will never write a check and it come back marked insufficient funds. Did the Honorable Elijah Muhammad ever write a bounce check? Never. Has Minister Farrakhan ever wrote a bounce check? Never. And neither should we, Muhammads. You should never write a bounce check to a hotel, a bounce check to an establishment, a bounce check to anyone. Shouldn't even post date it. Post date is a lie. When you write it and sign your name, X or Muhammad, make sure the money's already in the account. Let me post date this seven days. Yeah, uh huh. That means you need five of them days to get the money. Two of it for it to register in. Then when it don't hit, oops, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You remind me of the man that borrowed $100 from his friend on Saturday and told him he'd give it back to him on Monday. Tuesday came and he said, hey, you told me you would give me the $100 back on Monday. He said, oh, no, I didn't say Monday, my friend. I said one day. See, Muhammad don't play semantics. Muhammad shoots straight. We say what we mean and we mean what we say. When you wear the name Muhammad or you have an X, huh? that X means, that Muhammad means we're trustworthy. We have integrity. huh? When we get the door for a sister and we say peace, we mean peace. We don't want a peace. Huh? Yeah. Got that from the minister too one time. He said it to us when he sat down with us in New York. I said, my God, what's going on in our heads? So when you give the greetings, what do you mean by those greetings, brother? Is it sincere when you give the greetings? You understand? So the Amblash Muhammad says, as long as I have what? The hearts and minds of my people. I'll always be able to support whatever it is that I want to do. Minister Farrakhan have the hearts and minds of the people. And he has the hearts and minds of we who are with him. That's why we give him an unlimited Savior's Day gift. We show him unlimited love. Because he saved my life. Huh? He saved my life. I put up on my Instagram post with the picture I took with him on Sunday. I said, this is the man that saved my life of all the things he's permitted me to do to serve our people and to help him, the main thing he's done, he saved my life. Allah preserved me to get to his servant. Because I could have been dead in the streets in Brooklyn in shootouts. But he preserved me to hear the voice of his helper to his messenger. And that man saved my life because when I came to the nation, I still had weapons and knew where to go get them. But it was Minister Farrakhan's love and guidance and teaching that caused me to put him down. Yes, sir. And even when I was threatened in the nation, I went to go get him. It was his voice on the phone who said, don't do that, brother. Come on back to New York. Don't worry about that. These are the trials we got to go through. And he saved my life. Because yes, I don't know what would have happened if I would have reverted back to the mind of Satan. Understood? So the Amblaj Muhammad says, as long as I have the hearts and minds of my people, I will never write a check and a comeback mark insufficient funds. If the minister has your heart and your mind, I love Minister Farrakhan, then you should support him. Not just with finance. This is not about money. Support means in the building of a nation. Support means your time, your talent, your skill, your ability. That's hearts and minds. So if you're a carpenter, 
we need you to do some carpentry. You're an electrician, we need you for electrician. Huh? You're a business manager, we need you for business. We need you for finance. We need you for land irrigation. We say, I think that we should get some of that farmland. What are going to do good if we're going to do is look at it? All we're going to do is come out there, look at the farmland we got. Yeah, but it's got to be worked. Who knows how to run the tractor? Who knows how to pick the crop? Who knows how to do this? You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. We can do it, and we're going to do it. Look at what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said to Minister Farrakhan. Look at it now. I want your mind. I want you to line your mind up with my mind so that there be what? One mind. That's the transfiguration of Jesus in the scripture. That his mind becomes, the mind of God becomes his mind. So Elijah Muhammad tells Minister Farrakhan, brother, I want your mind. That's deep. He didn't say his body, his mind. When you got the mind, the body falls into place. I want your mind. I want you to line your mind up that we be one mind. So whatever Elijah Muhammad went through, Minister Farrakhan would go through. That's how you know he is his chief helper. That's how you know he's on the right path. And the same success Elijah Muhammad had against his enemies, Minister Farrakhan has against his enemies. And the same love that he got from the followers is the same, the Elijah Muhammad, is the same love that Minister Farrakhan has today. Yes, sir. Elijah Muhammad told Minister Farrakhan back in Boston, he says, one day, brother, you know, he said, everywhere I went in Boston, I seen my genuflection. I seen a picture of myself. Yes, sir. That was the great love that the minister and the believers had for him in Boston, Muhammad Muslim 11. One day, too, this will be for you, brother. Is it like that today? As soon as we know where the minister's going to be, we post his picture and genuflection everywhere. Is it like that today? All over Instagram, all over Facebook, all over Twitter, till we be the number one trending topic, Farrakhan. Huh? And what he's dealing with. Talk back to me now. You see them vehicles roll up. You see brothers standing on the side. Same thing we did for Elijah Muhammad. Because he's walking the path, the oneness of mind, and we don't have time to get into the depthness of that, of the oneness of his mind. Yes, but Allah willing, next time. Yes, the book of Philippians, chapter 2, verse 5 says, what? What does it say? Let this mind be in you. Huh? Yes, Come on. Which was what? Which was also in Christ Jesus. Yes, Stop right there. Do you want the mind of God? You have to want it to be able to receive it. And you have to work for it, for it to earn it. We got to submit, resist the devil, and he will flee from us. When the devil flees, who shows up? But God himself. There's a verse in the Quran in the 24th surah, Surah al nur the light, where Allah says, listen to this now, I will give you security in exchange for your Fear. So security and fear cannot occupy the same place at the same time. If you want the security of God, you must give up your fear. Taqwa, fear. And that's a deeper meaning, Minister Farrakhan said, of Muslim. Yes, a Muslim is one who submits his or her will to do the will of God. But a Muslim is also one who's made secure by their obedience to God. And as a result, they're able to secure others. That's a deeper meaning. That's why they want the Muslims to guard their property. That's why you want the fruit to come do this. That's why you want to see the MGT do this and help out with that. Because you know when the Muslims are on the scene, you're secure. Who in the annals of history had out nearly two million men? Anywhere, not one fight, not one skirmish, not one stabbing, not one shooting, nobody cussing nobody out. Nobody disrespecting nobody, your mama this and your mama that. Nobody! Except 23 years ago, right down the road at the historic Million Man March, 1.8 million black men came on out on that mall, and not one fight, not one skirmish, because the Muslims were large and in charge, and to God be the glory. 
our obedience to Allah's will makes us secure. That's why we don't need no weapon. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, brain gives birth to mind. Let this mind be in you. You ain't got no brain, you ain't got no mind. I want your mind, Minister Farrakhan. I want you to line my mind up with your mind. No brain, no mind. We're fighting for the hearts and minds of the people. What's the heart of the human being? The brain. And what gives birth to mind? Brain. Sperm mixed with ovum, the next thing that's formed is the brain, and the brain calls into existence all of the functions of the body. It is the central operation of the human being. No brain, no body, no movement. When you are brain dead, you're dead. It don't make a difference that the body's there. No brain activity, no electrical charge coming to the body from the brain. So we need a head. The nation of Islam has a head. Our head is in Chicago. The head is not in Baltimore. The head is not in New York. The head is not in D.C. The head is not in California. The head is in Chicago. Muhammad Mosque number two, where our leader resides, where our executive council is. That's our head. We pray for our leaders in the nation of Islam. If there's any leaders you need to pray for, is to pray for our executive council of the nation of Islam. Pray for our minister. Pray for ourselves. We're nowhere without a head. Brain gives birth to mind. Why isn't the devil settled on the best part of the planet Earth? Huh? Because the Earth belongs to the original black man. And knowing that the devil was weak and wicked, we put him out on the worst part and kept the best part preserved for ourselves ever since we made it. Huh? Allah says in the scriptures, I want to sit my throne upon the waters. Is it talking of the Pacific Ocean? No, 68,634,000 68, square miles? Is it talking of the Atlantic Ocean? 41,321,000 square miles? Is it talking of the Indian Ocean? 29,430,000 square miles? No! Is it talking of the lakes and rivers? 1 million square miles? No! The water is our brain. It sits in a body, 75% water, three quarters of it, water. The throne is our thinking. God wants to be the writer of our minds. So he says to Minister Farrakhan, I want your mind. I want you to line your mind up with my mind, that there be what? One mind. That's why you can't defeat him, Minister Farrakhan, because you fight fighting Elijah Muhammad in Farrakhan. Let this mind be in you, the same which was also in Christ Jesus. We want to come back at another time and teach to you and let you know that Elijah Muhammad is the real Jesus. He is the Christ that you've been looking for. So when the book of Philippians says, let this mind be in you, which also was in Christ Jesus, there's Christ is a title. So Christ Jesus here is a man that has the title Christ and he's giving his mind from God crystallized into the oneness of God to a Jesus figure. That's Elijah giving his mind to Minister Farrakhan. Let this mind be in you the same also that was in Christ Jesus. I hope you understand. The book of Proverbs says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. The heart of the thinking is what? The brain. Not this heart. This heart pumps blood. You don't make no decisions with your heart. You make decisions with your mind. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad says in the message to the black man, whatever a man can conceive, he can achieve. What are you conceiving, brothers? You just conceiving your next conquest with a woman? That's a weak conception. That's a temporary conception. Same thing with you, sister, because sometimes you conceive your conquest with a brother. Oh, it's been a long time. I need a man. Yeah, okay. That's weak. If your concept is not legacy, future, huh? children that become little gods, what do you conceive for yourself? You conceive yourself at the end of a reefer stick? You conceive yourself at the end of some crack, 
some cocaine? You conceive yourself at the end of Heineken? Johnny Walker Red? Cold 45? Cause light? Cause heavy? Cause killing you? Miller light? Miller heavy? Corona? Ciroc? Merlot? Wine? Red number 40? That's what you're conceiving? That's your conception? The next party I can go out to? See my sisters in Harlem last night dressed to not impress. Hardly no clothes on. But you want the world to respect you. But because they've turned women's mind to believing that you're a bitch when you're the second self of God. So that you running around in Baltimore and New York and in DC and in Newark, New Jersey talking about I'm a bad itch. I'm that itch. I'm a good itch. I'm the wrong kind of itch. I'm the right kind of itch. I'm a super itch. No, you a dumb itch. That's what you are. And you're not even that. You're the woman of God. But the battle between Allah and Satan, Satan got your minds. Give it back to God. Submit, surrender unto God. Resist the devil and he will what? Flee from you. Run from you. You can't do it if we don't get our thinking right. Is that clear? All right. As we get ready to close, listen to these words. We're almost done. Stay with us. Yes, sir. Brother wants to go in. He's coming right on back. God bless you, brother. Minister Farrakhan says, Doubt halts the process of decision-making and decisive action. It undermines faith. When faith is undermined long enough, it what? It what? No, say it with me. It what? Disappears. I'm going to say it again. Doubt halts the process of decision making. So if you and me are trying to make decisions in our life right now, and doubt comes in, lack of belief in self, lack of belief in God, lack of trust in self, Lack of trust in God, huh? Then it undermines faith. And when faith is undermined long enough, it disappears. That's a powerful statement from the Honorable Minister Lewis, from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. That's powerful. We got to pay attention to that. So remove doubt from your life. You got to go from a believer that believes to a believer that knows the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the representation of Minister Farrakhan is the invincible truth. It cannot be defeated. I have tested it against pastors. I've tested it against imams. I tested it with street theologians or theologians. I've tested it with historians. They can't defeat it. But when you doubt it, you will look defeated. But the teachings can never be defeated. It just needs proper representation. Proper presentation. And someone that has no doubt in their heart. Is that clear? That word doubt is going to come up as we close this lecture out. You ready? Let's get ready to close it out. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Remember now, go back. Faith will disappear if doubt exists. Is that right? But faith is the substance of things hoped for. So faith is not weak. Faith is not punkified. Faith has important tangibles. Substance and evidence. That's powerful. So when you say, what's your business plan? And faith is not leading it, you ain't got no business plan. Because you must walk by faith and not by sight. You got to walk by the substance and the evidence that has come before us to believe in what we can do now. You go to college because you know there's other people who went to college who graduated. You sat in that seat because you know someone else sat. Therefore, I can sit because it ain't going nowhere. But if you sit and you fall down to the floor, you ain't going to sit in that seat no more. You're going to wait for a new seat to come.
faith is based upon tangible realities. Faith is not spooky. Faith is not something that is so invisible that you can't feel it, touch it, huh? experience it. Faith is real. Have not the Lord, has not Allah God brought us this far? Have he not the, how many brothers in this room, God saved you from a painful chastisement in life? Saved you from something? How many sisters you've been saved from something in your life? Come on now, talk to me. Yeah, you, some of us should put up both hands and foots. Our feet should be dangling at the same time. We've been saved. Now I know you say Jesus saved me. And guess what? I say Jesus saved me too. The only thing I'm talking about, contemporary Jesus, Elijah Muhammad and Minister Louis Farrakhan. That's the Jesus that saved me. Ain't no man 2,000 years ago saved me. I'm going to prove something here right now. Everybody all right? Yes, sir. You know how we say that uh, Jesus of 2,000 years ago died for our sins? Praise be to Allah. How can one man die for the sins of humanity? We don't understand it correctly. Right now, it's not Ramadan, so I'm going to drink this water because I'm thirsty. How many of us in this room are thirsty? Raise your hand. Or oh, you can use a drink of water. Very good. When I drink this water, it's going to quench your thirst. Now, I want to know. I want to know. Are you still thirsty? Raise your hand if you're still thirsty. So no one man drinking water can take away the thirst of the humanity. So no one man can die for the sins of the people. What it means is that Jesus all praise is due to Allah. You got the point. One man dying for the sins of the people means when Jesus was on the cross, Eli, Eli, lama sabatini. Look, he calls for Elijah. Who's the only one that can call for Elijah? Farrakhan. He's on the cross. He calls for Elijah. Who is Elijah? Elijah is Christ Jesus, God. Who is the original man? The original man is the Asiatic black man, the maker, the owner, the cream of the planet Earth, God of the universe. It didn't say who is a original man, who is the definite article. The original man, the first man, the first begotten of the dead is Elijah Muhammad. And he's the God of the universe. What it means is when one man died for the sins of the people. He died because they chose Barabbas over Jesus. They chose a thief over an innocent man. Are you going to choose robbers over Minister Farrakhan? Are you going to choose liars over Minister Farrakhan? Are you going to choose dumb devils over Minister Farrakhan? Satanic ones over Minister Farrakhan? Or are you going to choose the innocent, truthful man of God who's done nothing but taught you and me the truth and live and stands on that truth. May Allah bless Minister Farrakhan and Mother Khadija Farrakhan for 65 years of marriage to one another this year. On September the 12th, 65 years. You 60, that's right, get to your feet, 65 years. You got many leaders today, they playing a single life. 65 years committed to one another not six weeks not five months 65 years and in love we got to get back to functional family life stop running around singing that song single 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 life stop it make a new one married 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 life in the right time of course don't rush to marriage and rush into a burning house in the car wrecks four times over. We're not telling you to do that. That's not what Brother Hafiz is talking about. But when is the right time 
when a man has found a woman, I mean a wife, he's found a good thing. That means a woman is already prepared to be a man's wife as the help me, as the second self of God. You don't come from the rib of man, that's another woman. You are direct descendants from God himself. Huh? You came before the sun. So the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan says, we don't call the black woman from the nation of Islam's perspective, goddess. That's for other people. We call her God. For the scripture says when he created them both, male and female, he called them both Adam. And Adam is Khalifa, one who stands in the place of another, rules in the place of another, God in person. So when you give birth to a child and you put that child on the breast, you are God in person to that child. And as that child gets older, then you guide them to the supreme being, Allah. Woo. Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, thus saith the Lord of hosts. You got it now, right? Let's close. Remember what we said about doubt and how it affects decision and decisive making and ultimately undermines faith? We close with Surat al-Baqarah, the cow. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful. I, Allah, Aleph, Alameen. And Minister Farrakhan says it's a deeper meaning, but we'll work with what we have. I, Allah, am the best knower. So those who know, Allah is the best knower of all who have knowledge. This book, meaning Quran, there is no doubt in it. Huh? So if there's no doubt in the Quran, we won't have undecisive action. If there's no doubt in the Quran and you believe in what Allah has put in that book, then faith will be strengthened and not undermined and faith won't disappear. Faith will reappear. There is no doubt in it. It is what? A guide to those who keep their duty, who believe in the unseen and keep up prayer and spend out of what we have given them, and who believe in that which has been revealed to thee and that which was revealed before thee and of the hereafter, they are sure. That which was revealed to us was the book of supreme wisdom. Lessons from Master Fahd Muhammad to his student, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, for the lost found nation of Islam in the West. That's how you know a God came. Because he left his imprint of supreme wisdom. Not any wisdom, the superlative of all wisdom, all skill, all talent, all ability was left by Master Fahd Muhammad. And on yesterday, thanks to the reminder of NOI archives, student minister Carlos, was when Master Fahd Muhammad and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad met each other in person. All praise is due to Allah for such a meeting. Because of that meeting, we are present today, as it was written of by the gods. So the lessons were revealed to us, and that which was revealed before us was Torah, Injil, and Quran. And of the hereafter, here after the removal of satanic forces, here after the removal of devils, dumb devils, here after the removal of liars, deceivers, the hereafter. Ain't no hereafter, you dead, and there's some after. What makes rain hill, what brings rain hill snow and earthquake? And in the ending part of this, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad says, no one has ever come back from the dead to tell you what it's like on the other side. What does that got to do with bringing rain hill snow and earthquake? Because rain hill snow and earthquake are real realities. So is death. There's a hereafter of the soul, but you ain't coming back on this side. Job said that which goes down in the earth comes up no more. So if you want to know what it's like to be dead, then go on and die. But I want to keep on living. Jesus says, whoever so seeks to keep his life will lose it. And whoever so seeks to give it shall have everlasting life. Give it don't mean sacrifice and die. Give it means die daily for the Lord, but live for the Lord. Two men came into a church, Brother Carlos, and they had long coats on. And they told the bishop, I hear that this is a place where you want to give your life for Jesus. Yes, 
They said, yes, it is. They pulled the coat back and pulled out the weapons and said, all right, everybody willing to die for Jesus, take a bullet and go to the Lord. 2,000 people was in the church. The church cleared out. It was only 20 people left. The angels of the Lord put down the fake guns and sat down and said, now, preacher, now that all the hypocrites have left the house of the Lord, you can preach the word to the true believers. There was only 20 people who truly believed. Allah says in the Holy Quran, success does not depend on numbers. While numbers help us to be successful, success does not depend on it. Muslims, continue to grow. We want new ones to grow today. But if you leave, guess what? The nation of Islam keeps moving on. We're not going to stop because you no longer want a soldier, you no longer want to work, you no longer want to fall in, you no longer want to be trained, you no longer want to come to class, you no longer, no longer want discipline, reform, love. The nation moves on. It's a fast moving locomotive. It ain't stopping for nobody. Unless you want to, when you get on, stay on it. I close. Thanking the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan for the opportunity to serve as his student, East Coast Regional Minister. It's my honor to be here in Baltimore. I thank Allah for my brother of this region, student regional minister, Abdul Qadir Muhammad over the Mid-Atlantic region. I thank Allah for our student minister here. I thank Allah for each and every one of you for your patience and giving us the attentiveness of your mind and your heart. We pray to Allah that we've sowed a seed in your heart this morning, the battle in the sky, the fight for the hearts and minds of the people. But as Allah says in Surat al-Baqarah, this book, there is no doubt in it. Remember, the book testifies of a man, not the man of a book. And the book testifies of Elijah coming. Huh? It is Elijah that will come before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he'll turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to the father. Least he smite the earth with a curse. Elijah doesn't die. Elijah goes up in a whirlwind and he leaves. He leaves his mantle to Elisha. Who's Elisha? He's the assistant of Elijah. Who's the assistant of Elijah? Farrakhan. He leaves him his mantle, his leadership, his direction, his love, his stewardship. And he's a wonderful steward of us. He sits in the seat of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. He never made himself the leader. He's a leader from the leader. He told us Elijah Muhammad is the eternal leader, not himself. He always keeps himself in the proper place that he should be. Why don't we do the same under him? He follows Elijah. Why don't we follow Minister Farrakhan? He says, if I've not done enough to earn you following me, then you're in the wrong place. I love you, Minister Farrakhan. I want to keep following you in your way and your guidance. I want to represent your personification of love. So as there's no doubt in the book called Quran, there's no doubt in Farrakhan. Did you hear what I just said? There's no doubt in Minister Farrakhan who represents the book. He's Sirat al-Najm, the star. Your servant is not, nor does he deviate. It is not nothing but revelation from on high. So God prepared him for Elijah trillions of years ago. When the original God saw Elijah, he saw Farrakhan as his helper. And he became his Savior's Day gift in 1955. And in 1997, Savior's Day, he was in green, trimmed in gold. A Savior's Day gift for Elijah Muhammad and for the black man and woman of America. Minister Farrakhan is the man today that he was yesterday. Same fire, but more matured in the mind of God. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad from Minister Farrakhan said to us, it takes 75 years just to learn how to live life. How old is the minister? 85. So he spoke to the people when in the cradle and when of old age. That's in the Holy Quran. 
It says Jesus spoke to the multitudes, though that historical Jesus never spoke more than the 35, 50 people. So which Jesus is it talking about when Farrakhan sells out arenas, 25,000 in New York, 35,000 in Houston, Texas, huh? 10,000 here in Baltimore and then some. 1.8 million million man march. Another million million family march. Another million millions more movement. And another million, you could have called it the million youth march. Justice or else. Else, excuse me. You're looking at a Jesus right in your midst. And he's fighting against the satanic Jews. And they fear the brightness of his rising coming out of his mouth. The word that condemns their world. And that our rise means their fall. Don't fear the white man's world. Don't fear his world. You know why? Because, brothers and sisters, the white man's world is, as the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has taught us, it is like snow piled high and deep. And it seems like it's immovable. Wintertime is coming. Snow will seem immovable. But what happens after a storm? What happens after 6,000 years of the white man's rule? The sun comes. And Allah says in the Quran, Brother Carlos, Muhammad is as a light-giving sun. And the Bible says Jesus is the light of the world, a sun. And our flag is the sun, moon, and stars represented with the red. And the star is a little sun from the big sun. That's Elijah and Farrakhan. And when the rays of the sun come on the snow, it melts the snow down until there's no more snow. So the white man's world is being melted away. And one day, it will no longer be in existence. And we will have won the battle for the hearts and minds of the people. Thank you for listening as we greet you in peace. Assalamu alaikum. All praises due to Allah. We thank Allah for this word and for this message. Allahu Akbar.